Hello everyone who's ever wanted to go vroom vroom vroom. I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths Fuel Engine Tutorials. I have been a very, very naughty boy. It has been a long time since we've done one of these because of shenanigans and updates and that kind of things, but uh, I had a look at my to-do list and by gum we need to get through this. So, last time, uh, for those of you who don't remember, and I barely remember to be fair, so we covered carburetors. So, that's uh, this thing on top of the fuel engine. Be sure to go check out uh, that, because I don't remember what I've already said, and I don't want to repeat myself too much. This is the thing that actually allows the cylinder to do interesting things. So, carburetor engines are... You have a number of options with them. This is where fuel engines start to get a little bit complicated. We're just, rather, we're just before the bit where they get really complicated. Because, if you look at the fuel engine menu, you'll see this branching radius thing. We're talking today about this. The supercharger. The supercharger increases airflow to the subcarburetor, allowing materials to be combusted more efficiently at low uh, RPM. Rotations per minute. I actually don't know what RPM stands for. Must be connected to a carburetor. So, this is how you get quite literally the most efficient fuel engines in the entire game. No joke. Um, you're not going to get better power per material than this. You will have basically no power whatsoever. Uh, but uh, you will, like, sip at materials delicately through a tiny straw with your pinky out. So, if we go down here, uh, you'll notice that uh, this thing needs more cooling, so I'm just going to stick a radiator or three just around here. Remember, radiators don't make things um, uh, more... Like, it doesn't make the engine more inefficient, so frankly, there's no reason not to use them. I do love that change, it makes life a lot easier. So... Uh, we have a lot of cooling now, and if we check the power per volume, uh, it's not great. We've got basically no power anyway, so we've got about 127.3 uh, stable power. Uh, but how do we make this better? Because there's things we can do to make this better. Well, remember this number here, 524.6. If we add a supercharger... And, by the way, specifically this thing, over to the left in the stable output. Uh, superchargers aren't going to really do anything at full load. So, 524.6, 524.6, 524.6. Oh, look at that! It has jumped uh, to 682 uh, power per material, which is already pretty damn good. This is already, like, you're getting into the kind of territory of a decent... Um, turbocharger engine with that kind of efficiency. However, that's only at 25% stable output, so this is where um, the niche that supercharger engines have is for things that need to be very, very efficient, but like don't use much power at all, which puts them in direct competition meta-wise uh, with RTGs. But the advantage of fuel engines like this is that they're very cheap, and they pay for themselves very quickly, whereas RTGs, because they're so expensive to place, uh, it takes a long time for them to, for you to actually save materials from using them. So, uh, literally the most efficient kind of engine you can get really is some is just having a carburetor uh, with five uh, superchargers on it, and they have to attach the carburetors. They don't attach the cylinders at all, and you do that, and you'll see that over in that twenty-five percent output, you get a whopping one thousand three hundred and eleven point five. Uh, power per material at 25% output. Um, you Basically, there's no change at 100%. So if I do something like this, you'll see 509.2, and if I put all those back, it's 509.2. So it does nothing when this is under full load, which is a problem. Uh, because, like, usually you do want a fuel engine to be under at least, you know, a decent amount of its load, right? Well, that depends on what you're doing. Uh, you can manually limit them. So this is the trick with supercharger engines, is that if you want to be cute, and if you want to, say, have a very cheap uh, resource gatherer, and um, not have to spend excess money on RTGs, because bearing in mind, uh, this whole engine here, uh, the entire engine, um, plus the fuel, actually, so 280 materials plus 10, is 290 materials in total, that gets you, like, 
that's like already cheaper than just one two meter long RTG and that's not even including the batteries uh, and the electric engine which by the way uh, batteries are damn expensive so this arrangement here um, which only does about 30 power this is already better so let's uh, drop this down to 25 percent and that is a stable power of 82 so this is the kind of thing that if you want to get really into the nitty-gritty and also if space is an issue because you'll you will notice uh, let's see here can I yeah and you can just go nuts on the radiators a little bit more and you have this absolute um, you have a stable power of about 82.4 and the thing just it barely uh, ticks over it barely uses like materials at all so we're going to show this just with uh, this you'll see over here hang on let's see here you get the materials per second is like 0 0.06 so it's basically nothing so let's set this to 84 and if you look down there in the bottom right corner just how slowly hang on right so now we are no longer gifted commodities and is it going to even tick down it might not actually tick down for like a really long time hold on yeah so <laughs> we're gonna keep salvaging uh, that right there so hang on let's do this so wait for it looking down at the bottom right 989 bloody Nora it's like we are like that engines running and it's just it's so slow so oh there it went there it went there it went there, future me you better edit that so people can actually see it because that's like blink and you'll miss it so this kind of engine it doesn't have to look exactly like this by the way um, let's see how expensive this thing is it's 360 uh, materials which means it's all it's still cheaper than a single RTG so this is probably what you want uh, for a resource gatherer uh, something that's not in combat so we go miscellaneous no resources material gatherer it uses about 30 uh, power so you could run uh, two material gatherers off this one engine and you'll be absolutely hunky-dory and it will use barely anything so really I should start using uh, things like this for my uh, resource craft because like honestly once you get the hang of these uh, there's no reason not to use them so and you can stick fuel on them as well so that's basically supercharger engines uh, in a nutshell uh, there's more cute things you can do with them of course um, like we'll talk about hybrid engines like at the end of this and like how where superchargers fit into it and by the way uh, there's no reason you can't use both superchargers and um, turbochargers which we'll talk about next time uh, because the advantage of fuel engines and the main advantage they have over steam engines bearing in mind I'm still bad at explaining steam engines that steam engines are great for something that's under a constant load um, for something that is just like continuously like under like you know continuously drawing power uh, something like and uh, maybe an offensive laser system or propellers or something like that um, you'd like the steam engine is overall more efficient if you do it correctly that's the important that's the important uh, thing to note if you do it if you make a good steam engine so if you're not very good at steam engines like raise your hand I'm raising my hand right now you can't see it here it is self high five um, yeah, you might be better off sticking with fuel engine entirely, or vice versa. Engines are funny like that. Um, what the hell was I saying? Ah, but fuel engines uh, can respond better. So you could make a fuel engine that, um, you know, for something like a LAMS, so laser anti-munition uh, system, like that can be drawing nothing or it can be drawing very heavily. Fuel engines are better for that. And yeah. I'm waffling now because, like, honestly, these things are pretty straightforward. Attach a lot of them to a carburetor, and the Tetris gets a little bit funky. You could easily um, stick uh, three more, of the, four more of these sticking out the sides like that if you want to, like, really go nuts. Uh, but I quite like this little prefab, actually. I think it's quite neat. I'm going to save it uh, right now, actually. 
Whee! Do, 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 do. And we'll call this the efficient box. Do, do, do. Mr. Cool Efficient Supercharge. <laughs> I should also mention I'm very sleep deprived and I probably shouldn't have recorded today, but oh well. So that's basically um, Supercharge in a nutshell. Um, basically, stick them on your engine. If you want to use only Superchargers, like manually lower the max RPM so you get the most use out of them and lots of cooling that'll help and honestly use these things instead of rtgs unless you're really strapped for space and yeah don't use these things on combat craft it's probably not worth it uh, not enough power so thank you all so much for watching please like comment subscribe if you want to see more videos like this support me on patreon or youtube membership if you like it really helps and there's fun perks in it for you thank you to all my current supporters uh, do check out my second channel, Border RRR. It's fun. And I'll see you next time in From the Depths. I just remembered that uh, we should... Um, you know what we should do? We should set things on fire. Yay! Sizzle, sizzle! Wait, we need more fire. Yay! More fire! Farewell!